The wildfire situation uh, continues to preoccupy us in the Northwest Territories. We're getting some tougher language from police and emergency officials. We heard that at the last briefing last night about the enforcement of evacuation orders. Police say they'll crack down on non-essential people who are trying to re-enter a community that has been closed. And anyone who tries to get in could face a year of jail time or could face and up to $5,000 fine. Ollie Williams was with us last hour. He is the editor of Cabin Radio, a valuable territory news source. And we were talking about how big a problem attempts at illegal entry has become. Before, the evacuation order said if you stay, then you stay at your own risk. Now it says if you don't get out, then you're at risk of prosecution, which is obviously a change. You know, it's an upgrade in the language. And, and that is because we are told, quote, quite a few people are trying to get back. Now, we don't know what quite a few means. That could mean seven. It could mean 70. It could mean more. But clearly, some people do want to get home earlier than the government is willing for them to do so. And the threat is there that RCMP will do something about it, particularly if you try to get past a roadblock. We're hearing that people already in these communities refusing to leave, they're frankly just going to get nagged by police every day and suggested that they please leave if they feel like it. But if you get to a roadblock, then you can be turned away. And I think that's the message that people are trying to get across. Because, yeah, people still don't have any timeline for this. And that's not necessarily necessarily anybody's fault, but it is extremely frustrating. And in all of this conversation about finances and where are the additional supports, it, it's really worrying for people who don't know how they're going to keep this going, let's say a week from now or two weeks from now. Let me ask you about pictures that we are running on our cbcnews.ca. We talked about how people have decided to stay in Yellowknife, notably some have decided to stay on their own, but of course there are essential workers who have to stay and getting supplies into the capital has proven to be a little bit difficult. We have pictures of empty shelves that I sh think we can share. Is this becoming a bit of a thing, Ollie? It's getting supplies into the capital, and it's the fact that we're not getting supplies out of the capital. Yellowknife, yeah, it has about 1,000 essential workers and 1,600 people who are not essential, but are still there. Beyond that, there are smaller communities that exist kind of in the orbit of Yellowknife. They maybe have 300, 400, 500 residents. Some of them you can only fly into or go by boat. Some of them, you've got a, a road to them, but they all use Yellowknife as a supply hub. And what has been happening is that Clearly, no one really had any time to think on the way out of town about how that supply chain was going to be maintained. So we've been hearing this week of, for example, the, the lone grocery store in a community called Lutzulke has been chartering aircraft at the cost of $50,000 plus a throw to get groceries up from Edmonton. Everybody in Lutzulke knows that that's the only supply flight coming in for a while, so better line up at the store when it arrives, and all the stuff has gone half an hour later. That is a worrying situation, and it's a situation where there's no clear answer until Yellowknife Airport can be brought back up and running again safely, which I think is happening, and until supplies can come all the way up the highway back into the city, which again, I think is starting to happen. But all of that takes time, and all of these communities that are used to getting regular shipments to sustain people, frankly, they're worried that that's not happening, or if it is happening, someone's going to have to find a lot of money, and it's not yet clear that the government will cover that. That's Ollie Williams, who's the editor of Cabin Radio. Timelines, that's something I want to discuss in just a moment. You heard him mention the resupply problems. Minister Thompson just telling us this hour, aware of the situation, and they are working to solve that and get the supplies moving more quickly. But let's look at some of those issues and discuss them as well with the mayor of Yellowknife. Rebecca Alty is back with us again. Mayor Alty, always good to see you and thank you for this time today. Not a problem. Good morning. So you were listening to my conversation or part of it that I had with Ollie last hour and he raised a couple of things. I, I want to talk first about the, the enforcement and this strengthening of enforcement at the barricades and the shift in language to really include now the statement about offenses that wasn't there before uh, in the evacuation order. I'm wondering, in your view, whether uh, that is something you support, whether you think it is needed in light of what you're seeing at some of those barricades. It's it's definitely still needed because we do we are still under a, an evacuation order. The NWT fire has still determined that this fire is a risk, and the challenge is that you know as days go by, residents um, they want to come home. They 
so you'll start to see with time that folks are going to start trying to return. So without any um, stronger wording, I I do foresee it being an issue uh, in the coming days. So Ollie was mentioning uh, the word that he was given last night was, you know, quite a few incidents at the barricades. Can you tell us a, a, a clearer number? Is there, is it dozens? Is it a, the odd one? Or how prevalent has it become so far? Yeah, and I wouldn't say that it's um, as much folks coming back from southern Alberta. I would say it's more um, residents in the Northwest Territories looking to come to Yellowknife for that supply um, chain issue of, like, we don't have resources in our communities. We need to, to get into Yellowknife. And so, um, yeah, that that's one of... I hear more about those incidents versus residents trying to, to come back from Alberta already. Okay. Um, Ollie also mentioned the airport as being one of the problems in getting supplies in. What is the status of the airport today? The status the status of the airport, it is open. Um, you know, it's not open for commercial flights, but they are now working with um, the communities because, as Ollie mentioned, we are the, the territorial hub. We're... We're the point of contact for, you know, groceries to then get flown into um, to all the communities across the Northwest Territories, as well as the Katikmi region of Nunavut. We're also the, you know, the, the territorial hospital that folks uh, come to for appointments and stuff. So, you know, with, with Yellowknife being closed, it has a much bigger reach uh, throughout the Northwest Territories as well as the Katikmi region of Nunavut. So how concerned are you, too, then, about this supply issue and the lack of things on store shelves? Yeah, it's good in, in Yellowknife, um, but it is concerning to get calls from, you know, the residents of Litsuke and, and Bechiko, um, and, you know, then I'm forwarding those calls on to the territorial government and, here the territorial government does have a the working group up and, and operating now to address those supply chain issues so hope that um the the food supply in the Klicho region as well as in let's okay are, are resolved okay so as you say the situation you're worried in the days to come people want to get home and they still don't have a firm timeline you've indicated previously that planning meetings began on friday of last week where are you in the planning and the reentry plan at this point, Mayor Alti? Yeah, so I'd say it's a uh, two pronged. So first, uh, folks will be able to return when the fires no longer a threat. So when the territorial government NWT fire say the fire is no longer a threat, that's uh, the first step. Step two is the making sure that we have those essential services up and running. So that's the the planning that we're at right now. And so it's really mapping out everything because, um, you know, we need the, the airport open with commercial flights. We need the grocery stores to, to be up and running because we'll have 20,000 people coming back. And, you know, we'll, we'll encourage residents to, if you are driving up, bring a bit of food so that you don't have to hit the grocery store on day one. We don't want 20,000 people going to the grocery store all at once. Um, we'll need daycares to be able to to have hospital staff back. So there's a number of pieces in a row that have to get put in place. And for people who might be watching from elsewhere in the country, not their usual home uh, of Yellowknife, just give us a bit of, of some insight if you could. I mean, uh, are there daily meetings on this issue? How are you conducting those meetings? Who's at the table? What's happening? Just really some concrete details on the process. For sure. So there's uh, the territorial government and the city government. Uh, we each have our, our planning meetings, and then we have a, a daily joint meeting. Um, that's all of the the crews or all of the, the different areas in each of our teams meeting. Um, but then, you know, for example, for the city's team, we've got three full team meetings a day. Um, and then there's joint meetings. So like joint communications meetings between the city and the GNWT, that would be outside of that one meeting. So basically meetings are happening 12 hours a day. Um, and there's kind of a drumbeat of regular meetings that the city is doing. And I assume on the GNWT side, they've got an equivalent um, with that one, one set 
touch point of everybody coming together, but you know, emails, calls are are flying and and details get sorted out that way as well. I, I have to let you go just very, very quickly, but do you think we'll have an idea by the end of this week when return might be possible? Uh, tough to tough to say. Okay. The NWT Fire is doing a, a thorough analysis. There's 40 kilometers worth of hot spots that they have to review. It's hot. It's sunny this week, which dries the forest out. So those um, hot spots are susceptible to flare ups. You get some wind on Sunday. So it, it's tough to say right now, but continuing to monitor the situation diligently. Mayor Rebecca Alty, thank you so much for the time from Yellowknife again. Thanks. Not a problem.